So uh, welcome to tonight's little talk, and uh, I'm Marcus T. Anthony, as you already know. Um, I'm going to talk tonight about uh, integrated intelligence, um, which is the idea of uh, the, the intuition that relies upon mind that extends beyond the body and interacts with other people, maybe other places and other times, uh, or even systems in nature. Uh, tonight, especially, I'm going to focus on telling you a few stories. So uh, I think the anecdotal or, or story side of this kind of uh, field of knowledge is really important. And it's also pretty interesting too, I think. And you can make up your own mind whether you think uh, I'm a madman or, or um, whether I'm actually on to something. My wife thinks I'm mad, but so I'm going to go with that. And, okay. So uh, this very, there's a very brief amount of theory that I'm going to go into, but it's, it's pretty easy stuff. I think you'll find it uh, pretty easy to understand. I developed this theory of integrated intelligence, as I call it, um, because when I went to... S well, first of all, I, I developed intuition through, um, uh, well, practical. You know, I, I did uh, meditation, I did some healing work, and I found myself to be quite intuitive. And then I went to study intuition at the University of the Sunshine Coast. Um, in Queensland, Australia, and uh, I needed a definition and I needed some framework in order to get around this study. And how was I going to study this kind of uh, theory of mind and intelligence? So, uh, okay, and I'm also going to uh, tell you what in integrated intelligence is, and also eight applications, okay, because uh, I think it's important to understand how, how, we, how we use this kind of intelligence. And I'm going to tell you a, a few tall tales at the end. You can decide with them, whether they're tall or not. Okay. Um, I think I've already gone through this too much. I'm not going to go too much into this kind of thing. Uh, okay, let's just leave that one. Okay, so what is integrated intelligence? Uh, basically, integrated intelligence is, is, is based on intelligence theory. That's how I, I figure it out. Intelligence is basically what you can do with something. How, how can you solve a problem? And uh, so what is integrated intelligence? It's basically using the intuitive mind that extends beyond the body to solve problems or come to insight about certain things. And the extended mind is mind that moves beyond the body, okay, as I mentioned. So basically, integrated intelligence is what I call a spiritual intelligence. Or what some people call spiritual intelligence. Now, in this little diagram here, what I've done is I've just listed some of the mental applications of integrated intelligence. So what can you actually do with it? Unfortunately, thanks to Bill Gates, I can only fit uh, seven applications on this slide due to the limitations of the software. So I, I combine one into two uh, here. So the, the seven applications are uh, synthesis, deep empathy, location, inspiration, precognition, uh, recognition and evaluation, and also, uh, sorry, diagnosis and evaluation and recognition. So what, what does this mean? I'll tell you in a moment. You notice though, I've kind of linked them all together because sometimes in one experience you, you have all these things or more than one of these things working at the same time. Okay. Um, there are a few important distinctions that I think I should quickly tell you about. First of all, um, integrated intelligence is a fuzzy kind of intelligence. This means it isn't as easily accessible or as clear as, say, mathematical intelligence. Um, for example, if you want to solve a mathematical problem, normally you go from A to B and, and you get, if you're good at maths, you'll solve it every time. If you get it wrong, you can go back and work out why you get it wrong. With um, the intuitive mind, it's not always the case because sometimes the problems that you're dealing with um, are kind of vague in themselves. Like, well, what is most important? Where should I go next in my life? Um, is this person right for me to marry? Uh, so, so sometimes the questions themselves are not so clear and the feelings that come through us are not always black and white, and then get mixed up with other kinds of feelings. Uh, okay, so it's a kind of a fuzzy intelligence. Okay. Now the second point is it's sometimes difficult to identify what the, where the source of a particular um, knowing comes from. So if you have an intuitive experience, how do you know this was in your brain processing the knowledge? Um, how do you know that the knowledge uh, came from a source beyond you? Well, there are some kinds of intuitive experiences which are definitely cannot be explain in terms of local knowledge. For example, if someone has, has um, a crisis vision, this is a very common kind of intuition, where they uh, dream or have a vision or, or a fear that someone else is getting in trouble. Okay? And then they go and discover that's the case. 
in the third person is not in the present location. Might even be in another country. Um, there are some very famous cases of this. These things can't be explained in terms of local knowledge. But it's true, sometimes it's really hard to know where, where information is coming from. So that's one of the problem areas. Okay. Um, it functions through other ways, of, uh, various ways of knowing, like the visual, the auditory, and also the kinesthetic or feeling. So different people can experience this kind of thing in, in different ways. And uh, it can be deliberate. Some people can apply this deliberately. Sometimes people have experiences of integrated intelligence, which um, it is spontaneous. They happen all by themselves. Okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through this. Basically, look at the look at the image. I think you'll understand what it means more than the words. Synthesis is when you have an intuitive sense of connect, how things connect together or work together. Okay. So it's usually instantaneous. Uh, instantaneous understanding of how um, something works together. Okay, knowledge, uh, um, experiences, uh, and things like that. Uh, recognition is when you recognize something or somebody and it seems that you know them but you don't really know them. There's something there or something you're supposed to, you're supposed to find out. Okay? But you don't really know what it is. Like you might walk into a bookstore and think, oh, I've got to, I've got to speak to this guy. I don't know why. And then, or I'm going to marry this guy the first time you met him, you know. People somehow have this, this kind of knowings and they're, um, they may also involve the extended mind. Okay, so that's uh, recognition. Diagnosis is when you work out the, the solution to a problem intuitively, okay, and sometimes the information may come from an external source. Uh, evaluation is when you work out whether something is important or, or of value to you intuitively. Like you said, okay, if I um, take this job, I get a feeling or a sense that it's right and important for me. I don't know why, where this information is coming from, but somehow I've got a sense that um, there's something about that, that job or place that's speaking to me. So there may be something, a transference of information uh, coming from a particular place or a future, okay? And it's a sense of whether it's important or not to you. So that's what I call evaluation, okay? Location is locating objects or things or people and using the intuitive mind. And uh, this guy here's got a rather inflated sense of himself, I think. Dowsing is, would be one obvious uh, way to test this kind of thing. Um, I'm not an advocate of dowsing, by the way, but I'm not a skeptic either. I don't know too much about it. And uh, I believe that scientific evidence is a bit un un undetermined. So. Inspiration is where you use the extended mind um, to create things. Maybe you're following the voice uh, in your head. Some people have spirit guides or a sense of spiritual guidance when they're, when they're creating. Many writers. Musicians and um, poets and so on will talk about this. Well, they used to talk about these kind of things. Now they're locking them away if they talk about these things. William, William Blake was a really famous one. He believed he had angels talking to him. Okay. Precognition is when you send something from the future, okay, or you see something before it happens. And deep empathy is when you feel a sense of connection with somebody, or you, or, or you get some information about um, them and they're not around you, so you get a sense of who they are. Or something that's happening to them. And that's it, okay. So here's a few tall tales of integrated intelligence. See if you can work out which of these applications uh, are being used in each one of these things, okay? So, um, I'm going to give 30 seconds after I tell the story, and you see if you can work out which, which of these applications is involved in the story, okay? So it gives you a chance to apply your, your understanding. See how well you go. Okay, first story. Um, this happened yesterday, actually. Uh, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, I mean, yeah, two, two nights ago, sorry. Um, in the evening, I did a nap. And when I woke up in the hypnagogic state, which is the drowsy state, I, had, I saw uh, an image or a vision came to me, a little mini movie. And very simply, it was uh, a guy holding a cricket bat, and uh, he was trying to get the ball. It was the end of the game, that's all I knew. And uh, the score was 169. Exactly, and he had a score of the last ball to win the game. Okay, and uh, and the camera and the image was over here, so I could see in this direction, and the, the last ball was pitched right there. And he was trying to hit the ball, and the, the idea was that he only had to get a very small amount of runs to win the game in the last ball, and he just couldn't do it. Okay, and um, about three or four hours later. This is exactly what happened in the game between South Africa, this guy here, Dale Stane, and um, against New Zealand. 
hundred sixty nine runs. At the last ball, they had to score the win, and if I didn't get it, and the ball was pitched right there, exactly the same place as I saw it in my dream. <laughs> you gave him the answer. You naughty girl. <laughs> That's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Yes. That's a, obviously a pre cognition. I don't know why I had that little vision. I wasn't particularly interested in the game. I, I like cricket, and I'm following the World Cup, but I'm not, I don't follow South Africa. But uh, for some reason, that came to me. I've had many other visions of, of um, like that of, of sporting events. I should be rich by now if I went down to the TV, but okay. I've told this story a few times before. Um, some of you would have heard it. I'm going to try and do this brief, brief, quick, the brief version of this story. In about 1996, I was living in Kofsava. I went to a meditation group. And uh, the, the, the teacher of the group, she told me, at the, at the end of the, the meeting, she, took, she told everybody that um, I had dreams about UFOs last night. She said, if you go out at night time, tonight, at about 2 a.m., you'll see UFOs, because that's what, 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 that's what always happens when they have these dreams. And she was actually a clairvoyant, she still is. So I went out that night, um, I actually set my alarm because I went to bed and got up again just before two. I went out and um, I actually saw two UFOs. And the first one was a big ball of bright light. As soon as I walked out the door, it was in the sky, it was about uh, maybe half the size of the moon, a bright shimmering ball of light which flew across the sky and out, out over the sea. And I walked around um, for an hour, and then just when I was coming back in exactly the same spot, I looked up and over my head going this coming this direction, it was actually south on the coast, there was a well, it looked like a flotilla of bright red lights in a double V formation. So there was one V of, of discs and a second V of discs. It's night time, so it was still black. All I could see were these orange shining lights. Okay. It looked like a flotilla, but I guess it could have been one vehicle with lights underneath it. And there was no sound at all in both cases. And uh, so that was pretty interesting. What do you think? What, what kind of... Uh, Skills are looking at what kind of, what kind of mental um, applications do you think were involved in that particular scenario? Remember, it's really the, the clairvoyant, not me, that's having the. that's the, displaying the abilities. What do you think? Well, the, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but there's a, there's a connection you've got with the, the clairvoyant, and maybe that could be part of empathy. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Inspiration. Inspiration? Okay. What do you say to inspiration? Inspired you <laughs> Okay, fair enough. I guess, I guess that's, that's part of it. Um, but that might not be um, associated with the, um, the extended mind. But who you knows, maybe, maybe at some level there was that kind of thing happening. Mm. This is a, a bit of a difficult one actually, the second one. That's why I put the second, not first. Um, I would say firstly precognition. Because in her dream, she saw something was going to happen the next night, okay? And um, maybe, uh, maybe deep empathy. Maybe she was connecting at some level with, uh, with these things, whatever they were. Uh, but the main thing would be like a form of precognition, okay? There was no connection with other universe people, uh, other extraterrestrials. Also, the community that she was sharing the support foresight with as well. Yeah, she's she's um, sharing with the community, yes. Yeah. But that itself would not necessarily be a form of uh, the integrated mind working. It's more of a standard form of communication. We also have standard localized information mixing up with um, with the extended mind when you look at these kind of cases. Okay. So obviously, if you're having a dream of something that happens the next night, that's an extraordinary thing then it can't be explained simply in terms of the local mind. Whereas her sharing information with the group in itself is, is a, a more normal kind of uh, way of relating information. I don't disagree though. I don't disagree. I think it's an empathic response to something quite extraordinary that's happening. Okay, yeah, fair enough, I guess so. What would what happen if someone in the group was a, you know, a skeptic? They probably wouldn't be in the group. You know, but then they said they didn't believe that. They went out at the same time. You know, that's it. You know, with the other humans. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have to believe to be able to. Well, you'd have to be in the right place. Well, yeah. 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 So yeah. So yeah. It's to be able to evaluate that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's an interesting point, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. We have to move on. We have to consider the, <laughs> the video audience. We have to get one. 
So uh, we can talk about these things in more detail afterwards. Okay, um, wrong way. Did this one? No, no, no. no. Okay. Dave the Ray. This is this is um. Because I do spiritual counselling, when I do spiritual counselling, uh, before someone will uh, contact me on the internet normally, and they'll say, you know, can you give me a, a session of whatever reason? What I do before, I um, I sit down, put myself into a light trance state, I just connect with their energy, and usually I start hearing things and seeing things. And this guy uh, we call Dave, not his real name, of course. This is not really Dave, <laughs> otherwise I would be sued. This guy doesn't see me, I just got this picture off the internet. Is it a real bottle of beer? <laughs> I suspect. I think, I think this is actually a bottle of whiskey, but... Uh, a bottle of whiskey, that's yeah, not Anyway, it's a problem. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? You interrupted me. Oh, no, now, okay. Now, um, anyway, when I sat down, what I saw, first of all, was that Dave is a raver. Like, I could just see him like, playing guitar, and, and, and there, was, there was just a sense of drugs and alcohol, and, Kind of a wild, a wild man kind of thing happening on. Remember, I had met this guy, he sent me an email, um, he said he was going to give me a session. And uh, when, I, when I did the session with him, and he came in, he had a couple of short hair, about 30 something. And uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I was talking to him about the process, and then I remembered this, this vision that I had about him, which I, which I kind of put aside. And then I saw, I, as I looked at, him, I looked at him, I saw quite clearly, yeah, this, there's an issue with drugs and alcohol, I can see that. So I said it to him, you know, um, okay, there's an issue with drugs and alcohol, it's something you have to deal with. You know, a therapist like, is not really that direct, of course, you could get into trouble. But he said, this one, uh, yeah, okay, I, I guess there is. And then he started telling me about his history with alcohol and stuff like that. Um, so I just saw, through connecting with him at some level, that he had this, this kind of issue within his, within his energy field. Okay, so what kind of um, process was I using then? Yeah. Empathy, yes. Deep empathy, basically. I'm connecting with him. I'm feeling something that's inside of him or his energy field. Okay. It might be also Is that a recognition as well? Yeah, um, normally, normally recognition is when you know somebody and it's important for you, right? Like, so when you, when, you feel, when you have that sixth Sense yeah. about someone that's an empathic response. Yeah, I mean, obviously these things do overlap. There's also a diagnosis so kind of thing. Synthesis, then? <laughs> synthesis is normally when you bring, bring together different bodies of knowledge or concepts to meet one, meet one thing. Okay. So in this case, it's not really synthesis, um, it's, but diagnosis might be a part of it as well because I'm seeing an issue. And beyond his issue with alcohol, there's something else. Okay, there's something else that he's not connecting with with his own spirit. So I use diagnosis. So there's a connection, there's a, a mixture of diagnosis and um, deep empathy. And, you know, there may be a few other things happening there, but they're often mixed up. Let's have to go the right way this time. No, I'm always going the wrong way. <coughs> okay, um, when I was in Hong Kong, I was in Hong Kong for eight years. Uh, I was getting a feeling that it was time for me to move on, and uh, I was coming towards the end of my contract at the school I was in. One night I woke up at about 2 o'clock in the morning, some, some, sometime like this, and I looked up and I saw this. In my room, it was black in the room, I just saw a map of Australia like, Australia like this, very similar to this. And there were some lights on the map. The lights I saw were all around Melbourne, and there was one up here uh, somewhere towards North Queensland, there were no names. And um, then a song started playing in my head. Uh, the song Funky Town, you know the old song by Lipsy from the 1970s. Gotta, it go? Gotta make a move to a town that's right for me. Gotta get me moving, get me moving with some energy. Because of that. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it's playing. All in my head, of course. I'm very clear audience, so I hear things a lot like that. So, what meaning can you take from this kind of thing? Well, it's pretty obvious to me. It's time for me to get the hell out of there. And the energy wasn't right for me to stay in Hong Kong. And I, I came back to Funky Town in Melbourne, and uh, I happened to think that maybe I should ask my money back, but uh, <laughs> anyway, here I am in Melbourne. <laughs> These things don't always clear all the details. There's a kind of a sense, a general sense, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to lead you to a perfect future. Okay. So what was, the, what was that an example of? 
do you think? I mean, any of those particular mental applications? It's not, not, necessarily, not necessarily that clear either. Anyone? Recognition. Yeah, I guess recognition. This place is meant is meant to be in my next step, so it could be more recognition. Yes, good. Um, I suppose location, which is also linked to recognition as well. And uh, yeah, I guess those are the two main things. Okay. Now, um, Donnie might be interested in this one. I when I wrote my thesis at the University of the Sunshine Coast. I applied a very particular aspect of, of intuitive. I was, I was quite intuitive by this time. So when I when I researched and read and wrote, I deliberately used an intuitive mind. And again, one night when I woke up, I saw a pattern very similar to this in my mind's eye. I didn't really see any details, it was just kind of a concentric circle. And I looked at it, and this idea started forming in my mind. So I, I got kind of used it as a creative process. And so this is what came of it in the end. This is actually a diagram from my <laughs> thesis. And what it does is detail um, the relationship of the human mind to, um, to society, to nature, cosmos, and to, to, to spiritual realms um, for a typical person in the modern knowledge economy. So uh, that's what came from this, from this image that I had. So, I, used to, I can't really go into the kind of process here in detail, but basically I used that, that image that came to me spontaneously as a creative process. So what kind of uh, mental application is this? Uh, yeah, it could be, yeah, it could be a kind of synthesis. Maybe I am drawing together, yeah, I guess I am drawing together knowledge of um, history and, and psychology and spirituality. Yes, yeah, so there's a kind of synthesis happening. And uh, also, uh, creativity, I'm inspiration of that book. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so, next one. Oh, this is called The Charming Man. This is the story. Uh, when I was in Taiwan in 1999, I was there for three years. After one year in Taiwan, I noticed something strange was happening, and that was I was the only white guy in the expat community that didn't have a girlfriend. And, um, and I was a bit perturbed by this factor, by this fact. And uh, so I sat down one, one day, I was actually in, in a school, in, in a school where I work in the morning before everyone came in. I sat down, and so I said, God, which I see as the intelligence of the universe, why, why is this happening, you know? Why am I the only loser in this town? This, this, this story is in my book, by the way, as well. Um, discover your soul, in flight. So, um, when I asked this question, what I saw was a picture of my motor scooter which I was used to ride around town. And my motor scooter, actually the name, the brand name was, it's not the same as this one by the way, the brand name is Charming. Okay, Charming. And it was actually meant for women. Um, in my book I make the joke, it wasn't God mocking me and saying that I was a loser for riding around with a woman's motor, motor scooter. Um, it was a very direct uh, message. I needed to be more open and charming and friendly to, to women. You know? So that's what I started doing after that. Simple message. It was a pretty direct message, so I started you know, being a bit more flirtatious and open with, with girls, uh, and I, I got a girlfriend very shortly, shortly afterwards. So, what kind of mental application is this? Maybe inspiration, a bit of creation. Yeah, I guess it's inspiration. I guess in a way, yeah, because I, I used it in a way, yeah. A diagnosis. Yes, a diagnosis. So God diagnosed my problem, <laughs> <laughs> my loseness. Okay. And last one, very last one. I've told the story, this is my book, Extraordinary Mind as well. This is um, Anita Mujani, and the book was, is called Dying to Be Me, a very, very successful book. I think it's one of the most successful books in the world in the last couple of years. And... Um, I don't know that. What's that? Well, you're, you're hearing about it now. Okay. Anyway, here's the story. I was, I was in Hong Kong, I walked through a bookshop, I didn't know anything about this woman. At all, nothing. And I walked into a bookshop. I saw this book lying in a in a tray, a book tray of all kind of reading books. I picked it up in a state of recognition as we'll take this book's for me. I'm going to buy this. But that, that's not really that what I'm talking about here. I went home and I started reading the book over the next few days. And I read it on, on public transport and I read it in a restaurant. And each time I started reading it, I kept thinking, I'm going to meet this woman. 
this woman I meant to meet, this woman is here somewhere. I, kept looking, I was on the subway one day, I thought, this woman is, I know this woman is somewhere just right next to me. And uh, I looked around and she wasn't there. And then that night, that same night, my friend invited me to an Indian restaurant. And uh, she's Indian. And again, I was in the restaurant, and I kept thinking, this woman is somewhere near, somewhere near me. This is, really, this is a really strange feeling. But she wasn't there. They were looking, she was not there. And uh, I read the book that she, she did actually live in Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, or she's from Hong Kong, anyway. And a couple of days later, I was in a, um, a coffee shop in Discovery Bay, which is on Lantau Island, just off the coast of the mainland island in Hong Kong. And I sat down, I put out a book, and I did, I did I notice that there was a, a table of three Indian people sitting just next to me. And, and there were two sitting up. Opposite, or with their, with their backs facing me, okay, and there was one guy sitting facing me on the other side of their table. And I looked at the woman who was sitting on the, on the left hand side and thought, I think that's an animal journey. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not sure about this, you know. And being a, a shy loser kind of guy I am, as I've already explained, I thought, you know, how can I work this out? So I looked at the back picture of the book and it had a little mark on the, on the, oh yeah, somewhere here, I think, yeah, there it is. So I sort of snuck around and then yeah, the mark was on it, was on her cheek. I thought this must be a new to the journey. And I was, I was still too scared to um, say anything. And then the guy on the other table, <coughs> the Indian guy, got up, he came around and he said, Hey, is that an interesting, interesting book, you, book you got there? And I said, Yeah, he said, Is that a new Yeah, it is. Come over and join us. <laughs> so anyway, I spent. Um, Time speaking to Anita about a book dying to be me, and it's a fantastic book too, by the yeah. way, if you're if you interested. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, that was also what we might call a synchronicity as well, mm -hmm. like a meaningful coincidence. And uh, we also found out we lived in the same small village in the in the um, in the north of Hong Kong at one stage. We didn't even know. It's a very small village uh, called Yun Yunlang Yunlang Village, and uh, she just lived across one side of the village, and I. Uh, across the other side of the bridge. I didn't, we didn't even know each other. So that was, the odds of that are astronomical. Okay, so what was happening in this case? Any ideas? What kind of skills or mental applications? Was I applying? What was happening to me, maybe indirectly? I'm going to go deep empathy. Yeah, I guess, I guess there could be a kind of deep empathy there. The deep empathy, maybe not the main one, Usually you're feeling something that somebody else is experiencing with deep empathy. So in this case, I'm getting a sense or a feeling that something's going to happen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now even though it's a very really vague sense, and I, 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 at the time I was having like this is this is ridiculous. It's a precognition. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of yeah, kind of precognition, I think. Mm -hmm. A sense that something is going to happen. So I think it's probably the main one. And um, yeah, I guess that's, that's probably it, yeah. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. If you're interested in any of my books, um, some of these stories appear in Extraordinary Mind, which is available on, online in the uh, ebook format. Also, hard copy if you want. Discover Your Soul Template, which is a hard copy book. How to Channel Your Dissertation is um, a book about using this for research purposes. So, that's only in, in an ebook. So, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I hope you get to apply your own intuition in your own life. Thanks. I think that was a bit longer than I expected.